Hello, this is Vituals, the chess noob, learning and having fun with chess. Another day, another Karakhan defence, another Karakhan defence destroyed by the Von Hennig Gambit. So this was a quick game, 17 moves, let's go. So e4, and my opponent plays Karakhan, c6. Of course, d4, as expected, d5. Now knight to c3, all main line, captures, but rather than capturing back Von Hennig Gambit, bishop to c4. Straightforward gambit, we give up the pawn for accelerated development. Opponent bar develops their bishop to defend the pawn, that's fine. f3, challenging that position. Now you can see Stockfish, the scumbag, thinks that there's an opportunity here to immediately kick the bishop with g4, which would be defended by the queen. Now, I'm not so sure about that because it's very, very committal uh, and basically you're damaging your kingside pawn structure. So I still think this is a pretty good move. However, this can get basically foiled if the opponent plays knight to f6, which is a fairly, fairly logical sort of move. However, uh, I'm lucky because they decide to capture and that allows me to develop my knight. And this is part of the rationale and reasoning of the von Hennig Gambit. We force one of their pawns to make multiple moves and now we have three pieces developed. We have a pawn in the center and we're ready to castle while black only has one bishop developed uh, and this knight's natural developing square is blocked. They now play e6, a very natural move and quite necessary because otherwise we get some pretty nasty sort of attacks on black's f7 pawn. And you can see here, castles, I'm fully developed, or black is definitely down on development. And this is the power of the von Hennig Gambit, this very rapid development. Now, black is technically completely fine here. It's, I think, about uh, minus one, minus 1.5, so black is actually ahead. However, it's not so easy for black to play, as we will see as we move into the middle game. So they develop the knight, makes sense. I develop the bishop. Stockfish thinks a more forthright direct attack by, uh, by pushing my knight forward is better. Um, but that's still, still kind of okay. And now they push this pawn, okay? And this was a mistake, arguably almost a blunder. Here you can see, you know, about plus 4.7 or so, but at high depth, Stockfish causes a plus seven advantage for white. And black is completely bound up and their king is stuck in the center and about to get attacked. Let's see. So I push the pawn forward. What are they going to do? They try to do a sidestep. I decide to push my knight forward now. Stockfish thinks that giving a check first is fine, but it's okay. I give a check now. Look at this, you know, really, really bad for, for black. Uh, it's about plus nine now. They're forced to move the king forward with that check. King is now completely stuck in the center. I now start capturing, start liquidating. Takes, they take, that's fine. I'm happy to trade. So I take that bishop, they take, take back with the rook. Now I control that file. They try to develop, but that bishop is hanging. Captures, they take, a sidestep, and you know, in the confusion, Black, unfortunately, blunders a move. They try to push forward to attack my rook, but hang their knight, uh, you know, in doing so. Captures, here, black, psychologically defeated. Definitely, I'm winning. I think it's about plus 17 in this position, and black resigns. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to try the Von Hennig Gambit against the Kara Khan defense. It is quite effective at the beginner intermediate level, and it will often take the Kara Khan players out of their comfort zone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.